Come into this place of peace. And let silence heal your spirit. Come into this place of memory. And let us history warm your soul. Come into this place of prophecy and power. And let its vision change your heart. Good morning. Welcome to Chapel by the Sea. I'm so glad that you joined us today. It's wet outside, but it's dry in here. So thanks be to God for a roof over our head and a warm, comfortable, cool and warm, comfortable place to worship this morning. I have a few announcements. First of all, if you're visiting with us today, we are so glad that you're here. So I noticed a lot of folks from out of town today. So welcome to Clearwater Beach and welcome to the Chapel by the Sea. I've got a couple of special friends joining uh, us today for worship. First is uh, Joyce Naus, a friend of mine from my church back in Tennessee. So thanks, uh, for Joyce, for coming and being with us today. She's moving to Bradenton. I'm angry about that because I wanted to move a little closer. Um, but welcome, Joyce. My mother from Tennessee is also here. So Susan Abbott is here. <laughs> These are folks that I know, but every guest here today is special, and so welcome. I hope you'll join us after the service. Um, maybe it'll still be raining, which will encourage you to join us for Orange Juice in our chapel hall following worship today. Next Sunday, it's hard to believe, but next Sunday is the last Sunday before our kids go back to school. August the 6th is the blessing of the students, and so if you have a kid or you are a kid, please come next week. We're going to offer a blessing to you and to your teachers uh, before sending you out into the world to get educated. Uh, so come for that blessing next Sunday. And finally, you'll see in your bulletin lots and lots of places for you to serve in uh, and around the church. And so look at that. And if you have the inclination, please let us know. Call the church office and say, hey, I could serve orange juice or I could be an usher or I could certainly serve communion better than that guy. So make sure you call the church office today. Now, I want to invite just for a moment, any children that are here to come up here. My son will join me now. Any other children want to, to participate in a little thing that we're going to do? Anybody else? I see a couple of kids. Anybody want to join me? All right, Jake, you're it. Can you handle it? All right, so most of you are going to know this little thing that we're going to, we're going to do together. I had to teach him last night. I have failed in my parenting duties in teaching him this, but you ready? Okay, here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors, and there's all the people. Can you do that with us? All right. Ready? Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors, and there's all the people. Today in worship, we're going to turn that little saying inside out. All right, hold on to that. Let us worship the Lord together, focusing our mind's attention and our heart's affection on God. Let's worship together.
let us responsibly perform the call to worship. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations. God's marvelous works. In unison, let us do our <laughs> excuse me. In unison, let us do our invocation. God of our hearts, souls, and minds, unite us with you in our worship, that your presence may be manifest in our daily lives. That become our will, that others sing your grace and power in us. May glorify you. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus would I know more of his grace to others show more of his saving fullness see more of his love who died for me more more about Jesus more more about Jesus more of his Let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his saving for Jesus on his throne, riches and glory all his own, more of his kingdom sure increase, more of his coming prince of peace, more, more about Jesus, more, more about Jesus, more of his 
gratitude for the many gifts we have received and in commitment to our church let us be generous in our morning offering
as we go to the Lord in prayer today. This has been a little bit of a, uh, maybe a lot of a sad week for many in our congregation. Uh, We've had some loss this week. And so today we pray for the family of Gerald Cummings. Jerry was the guy that played the piano so well without reading music. And so services, I think, were held for him in Ohio this past weekend. We also pray for the family of Diane Hood. Diane was only 23. Uh, She grew up in this church, and then her family moved away to Tallahassee, I think about 10 years ago. And so you can imagine her parents, Don and Gina, aren't quite sure what to do with themselves. So we pray for them. And then we pray for Joe Holmes and his family in the loss of Joe's father, Joseph Holmes, um, yesterday in Pennsylvania. Then Jenny Frost requests prayer for her brother, Matthew, um, as he's dealing with cancer. And so you bring lots of concerns with you to worship today. We've named some, and there are many, many more. You also bring your joys and your prayers of thanks and praise with you today. We bring that all before God now in our time of prayer. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths, O Lord. Speak your word of truth and justice into our hearts, we pray. For without you we would be nothing, and with you we have nothing to fear. We give you all thanks and all praise, for you are faithful, and we are blessed. Open our eyes to your goodness all around. Help us count our blessings, and then help us recognize our responsibility to care. To care for the widows and the orphans, to care for those who live with constant food insecurity, to care for the homeless, whether they sleep under bridges or on a relative's couch, to care for the grieving, the lonely, those facing illness, both physical and mental, to care for those who seem to have everything on the outside but seem empty within. Forgive us when we fail to be salt and light in an often tasteless and darkened world. Help us become generous with our lives, offering ourselves in radical acts of stewardship and grace. Remind us of your high calling upon each of our lives and grant us zeal to do our work as if working for you. And now in our silence, show us a higher way of living and being. And praying the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please be seated. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. You can find it on page 786 in your pew Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'm curious, you noticed anything different about the altar today? <laughs> That's my Himalayan salt lamp. And I am a terrible human being 
because about two years ago, this was given to me as a gift, and it proceeded to stay in a box for roughly the next two years. But upon packing all of our worldly belongings and bringing them to Florida, I packed that among the things I would put in my office upon arrival. And so unpacking all of my preacher things, my books and whatnot the other day, I came across the Himalayan salt lamp and I pulled it out and plugged it in and have enjoyed it ever since. And then I read the scripture text for today where Jesus calls on his disciples to be salt and to be light. And I thought about this handy-dandy little salt and light that was there in my office. And I decided, huh, I wonder if there's anything interesting about this little salt lamp. And so I googled salt lamp, and you would not believe what I discovered. Within this salt lamp are healing powers unknown previously to other generations across the course of time. I read on the internet, so it must be true, <laughs> that this salt lamp, because it's salt, it does a lot of things for us. I'll name a couple. First of all, it absorbs moisture. Salt does that, right? It absorbs moisture in the air. And along with that moisture, it absorbs the pollutants, the toxins therein. And so as it absorbs those moistures, moistures, the moisture with the pollutants, the pollutants stay on the salt, but then the light causes the moisture to what? To evaporate, right? Keeping the toxins, the pollutants, the allergens there on the salt and then releasing fresh, clean moisture back into the air. So it cleans the air, I read on the internet. The second thing I read on the internet was that because of this ongoing absorption and then evaporation of the moisture, it creates negative ions. Did you know that? Negative ions are supposed to be really good for us, and this is actually true. Negative ions give us more energy, can combat depression, can even maybe help with high blood pressure. And so this little lamp not only helps clean the air around me, but it makes me feel so good <laughs> right there in a box for two years. What a shame. Now Jesus thought about what a shame it would be if his disciples and the church that would be found in his name, if they kept that salt and that light away knowing that the disciples, us, have a gift to give to a world, what a shame it would be if we kept it hidden. I actually want to read the passage to you again, but this time from the message, because I think in this contemporary language it really drives home the point I think Jesus was trying to make. So from the message he says, Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand, and now that I've put you up there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. And by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. So from the message translation, Jesus calls upon his disciples to be salt seasoning, bringing out the God flavors on this earth, to be light, bringing out the God colors in this world. You know what I think this boils down to, these few verses? Relevance. 
I think it boils down to relevance. That if Jesus endows us with these many blessings and all of these gifts, and if we keep them hidden within our small family of faith, what a shame. It would be like keeping an amazing light hidden away in a box for a couple of years. It's about relevance. Jesus says, if you aren't salt and light to the world beyond our community, what's the point? Relevance. Apparently, Jesus isn't the only one who asks that question because apparently droves and droves of millennials are asking the same thing of the church today. What's the point? The church in America has, has lost the younger generation and a study in 2014 by the Barna Group discovered that the number one reason millennials have largely left the church, you know the reason? Irrelevance. They're not seeing the church as bringing out the God flavors in the world. They don't discover the church shining a light, bringing the God colors out of the world. And they're saying, with the church, what's, what's the point? What's the point, they're asking. I would say that those particular millennials have never been to the chapel by the sea. Or they might change their mind. Now, I've been your pastor for a long time, almost a month now. <laughs> and I've seen how you shine your light and how you bring God flavors into this world. I've seen it firsthand already. You are a small but mighty congregation. I want to give you some examples of, of how I've seen this in action. And I can brag on you because I'm new here. I had nothing to do with any of it. And so this, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I attended a meeting, a leadership meeting, with RCS, Religious Community Services. You're familiar if you're around here. And you know what I believe I heard the executive director tell me? That of all the churches in Pinellas County, guess which one supports RCS the most? You're looking at it, baby! Now, if you're not familiar with RCS, this is an organization that feeds the hungry, clothes the naked, houses the homeless, and shelters the abused. Not too shabby, church. Well done. This past week, I uh, got to be with other religious leaders at a meeting at the Clearwater Free Clinic, another organization that this church supports. And I discovered how this organization literally saves lives of of people without access to affordable health care. Amazing. This church sponsors and helps make that happen. And then a couple of weeks ago, I had the pleasure of carrying in, I think, two whole watermelons for the group that was working and cooking meals for the homeless out of our Peace Cafe. They do this every month. They cook and they go serve homeless people. Maybe one day they'll let me tag along. I've been really impressed with what I've seen, especially being the summer crowd, right? Just as this summer choir is small but mighty, you're, you're the summer population here and you, you continue to be mighty. And, and I'm impressed by that, but lest you think that this church only cares about the down and out, I attended a meeting of the Chamber of Commerce this week. I've been encouraged to do that by church leaderships. And my presence at that meeting indicates that we don't only care about the job seekers, but we care about the, God create, the job creators as well. From the least of these to the greatest of these and everybody in between, we care about people. And I am so proud to be your pastor. But you know what? We can do more. You know I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy, right? We can do more. One of the things that I have a hard time wrapping my brain around is the fact that this is the only church on Clearwater Beach. The opportunity there is exciting. The responsibility there is, is a little daunting. The only church. 
So I did a little demographic study. Apparently, there's about 8,000 residents Clearwater Beach. Now, some of you may correct my demographics, but that's the best number I could come up with. About 8,000 people. Where are all of them this morning? <clears throat> 8,000. Let's imagine that several of them have other faith communities, churches or synagogues or mosques. So estimating high, let's say 30%. It's 2,400 people involved in other faith communities. That's a high estimate, I think. That leaves 5,600 people on Clearwater Beach, not even including San Key or Island Estates, 5,600 people without a faith community. Can we reach them and bring them into our church? Yeah, some of them, for sure. Give me a number. How many percent? 10%? Can we reach? 15? If you had gotten a really good preacher, maybe 20%? What about the rest? What about the rest? Here's the point of the sermon. We have got to turn this church inside out. Because it's easy to be salt and light to those who come through our doors. We can shake hands and give hugs and pray and care. It's a little harder to be salt and light in the market, in the restaurant, at the hospital, in the neighborhood, to the person who lives in the same house. How do we turn this church inside out and be the salt and the light that Jesus calls upon us to become? Well, I think it starts with you as individuals. And it starts with a little mind shift. And I'm trying to get folks to see this, that we don't come to church. We are the church. A couple of weeks ago, I, I encouraged you to change your thinking from thinking I am a member of a church to I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. And today, I want you to shift your thinking from saying I go to church to I am the church. Say that with me. I am the church. Yeah, that's right. And when we shift our thinking like that, we recognize the vast responsibility each of us have to be salt and light in our daily lives. I am the church. So you remember that little thing I did with my son up here? This is the church. Say it with me. This is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors. There's all the people. All right. I told you we're going to turn it inside out. So repeat after me. We are the church. We're more than a steeple. We're more than some doors. The church is the people. <clears throat> Amen, church. You didn't have to repeat after me there, but you did anyway. <laughs> we are the church, and we are called to minister to those 8,000 people here on Clearwater Beach and beyond. We are called to be salt and light, and we are, but we can do more. We can do more. So I close today inviting you to sing along with me. I like to do that. Have you noticed? To sing along with me a little song. It's a song of commitment. I think most of you will probably know it. But here's the deal. Before we do that, I forgot a point. That's what you do when you memorize a sermon instead of have notes. So I wanted to go back to this little salt lamp. I decided to use it as an illustration in my sermon. So I went back and I googled Himalayan salt lamp. And the first website that came up was snopes.com. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should check out the marvels of the salt lamp and see if they're for real. They're not. <laughs> Turns out there's no science that backs all of the claims of this marvelous salt lamp. Turns out the only thing in this room that can make a difference in the world around is you. All right, back to this little song that we're going to sing. I don't want any more fake news, so if you're going to sing it, sing it and mean it. Make a commitment this morning to live out the words of this little song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, small but mighty church, go forth and be salt and bring out the God flavors on this earth. Go forth and be light, bringing out the God colors of this earth. Go forth and shine, my friend. Amen.